Um, so one of my questions, but it kind of leads into it really well, is that I'm going to ask you about the chamber and what it is that you do. But the reason what the link is that because of your business background, I think hopefully that really helps you do what you do and you know that kind of thing you the fact that you understand businesses in the region and the challenges and stuff but if we talk about the chamber first yeah what is it what is it um so just the... just just so you know i know what it is but in case someone on the youtube discovers this and doesn't know i don't want you to think that i'm an idiot who got you on yet. <laughs> <laughs> just say no that's that's totally fine Sue. um so okay we are, uh, so the Northeast England Chamber of Commerce is one of 53 accredited chambers across the UK. Um, most chambers of commerce are city or county based, but we are patch covers kind of the North Northumberland Scottish borders right down to North Yorkshire, Tees Valley border and kind of all points in between. Um, we represent everything from that business that I set up nine and a half years ago where it was just you know owner manager from the dining room table sort of thing to the biggest employers in the region multinational companies exporting all over the world all of that so right across every sector of the economy pretty much right across the whole of the northeast um and we exist basically to enable businesses in 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 the region to be part of something bigger and to um to, to expand, obviously, to help them raise their profiles, um, but to expand their, their their networks, to develop their knowledge and understanding of policy and opportunities that they face and how we can help them work around particularly sort of regulatory issues, if you like. Um, but for, for some of our members, it's about access to things like our events program. We have, we, I think this year, we're putting on more than 300 events this year, and that's everything from again quite small networking sort of events where it's just people in a room together sharing their experiences with one another all the way up to our kind of you know big sort of president's lunches with high profile speakers and 200 people in the room to our annual dinner with 800 people in durham cathedral and um our inspiring females awards our, our chamber business awards which are coming up in in july um so you know there's and and there's an event really for every level of membership we do a lot of events around kind of if you like our knowledge offering so we'll mm -hmm. bring in an expert speaker who can talk to a group of our members about a particular particular subject um last month uh, sorry just last week we had a, a speaker who on the face of it you think this is going to be really quite dry it was the professor of supply chain management from cranfield university this guy was absolutely brilliant i mean he was one of the most engaging speakers i've ever heard um really really impressive guy so so by being part of the chamber you've got access to all of that and then importantly as well coming back to that thing about being part of something bigger particularly for small businesses we can hopefully provide them with something that they might not have themselves in house so for example if you are a chamber member of any size you've got access to our 24-hour hotline which can give you hr support legal support tax health and safety support um we can we can support you with, um, if you're trading internationally, we can support you with the sort of documentation that you need to have in place to do all of that successfully. So again, smaller businesses might not have that in-house, mm -hmm. but by being part of the chamber, they've got access to that. And that's all part of their membership. What we do in our chamber is once you remember that's it, you've got access to all of that. There's not there's no kind of sell on, if you like, there's, there's nothing else to sort of buy into. That's all part of, of what we're there to deliver for you. So so it's 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 fundamentally about enabling businesses to to be better to grow mm -hmm. to continue to to develop in the region by being part of something bigger that kind of holds the whole of the region together yeah okay because what i always think is quite funny is that with i'm fortunate in some ways because over the course of my career i spent three and a half years in regional government i've been in mm -hmm. different private sector businesses different sizes i've done my own thing yeah. but actually when you talked before about um lobbying government stakeholder engagement that kind of thing i don't think people always realize this is so i'm based on team valley so i'm surrounded by thousands of other businesses mm -hmm. of different sizes but it's how important it is to have someone like yourself um to lobby and champion the region to make sure that we get considered on policy decisions because someone somewhere is looking at okay so we, as a government we have 100 billion pounds how do we allocate it and I think yeah. it's really important to have someone to actually, or a body or a group of bodies that say, look, don't forget about us. 
our strengths are in automotive, offshore energy, tech, and whatever, and to keep banging that drum. Because I know in the past, you know, the worry always is, is that the money goes down south, it goes to other regions that are sexier or whatever. And I think people don't always see the benefit in that just because they don't have an awareness of it. But it's so important. And I didn't know how much of your job as the big boss now is doing that kind of thing to really be a voice of the region. It's it's probably the single biggest part of it, actually, Steve. I mean, you used the term there that I use that that a big part of the job is banging the drum for the region. And that's probably the best bit. You know, that's the bit that I like the best. You know, where I'm able to talk about a business that's doing particularly well or innovating in a particular way, or it's kind of really the sort of you know, the sharp end of its market. And that's brilliant when, when we're able to talk about that. But a big part of the job as well is to shine a light on those parts of the economy that aren't working so well mm-hmm. and shine a light on those aspects of the region where, you know, we just had a, a bit of government policy shaped another way. And sometimes it can mean, you know, a, a line and a bit of legislation written in a different way. Sometimes it can mean requiring Treasury to put their hands in their pockets a little bit more than they do. Um, but, but you know, we've got to demonstrate not just, it's not just about us saying to government, please help us with that. What we've got to say on the region's behalf is, the why, you know, why why do we need support with that, and and the and the and the purpose of it. So you know, if, if you help us with this, this is what it will deliver. This is what it will unlock. This is the benefit it will release to the to the rest of the UK. So, so a big part of the job is is banging that drum, which is brilliant. But then a part of the job as well is to kind of hold government speak to the fire as well. And, and that doesn't matter which party's in government. We're mm-hmm. totally politically neutral. Got no kind of sway one way or the other on anything like that it's just about kind of holding the government to speak to the fire to make sure we get the best possible deal for the northeast mm-hmm. i just th- this is a seamless segue by the way but i've just <laughs> we've had a comment in from thailand but the, the point is it's how people do see stuff from the internet we are part of a genuinely global um yeah. part of the world i guess and you know i think are we still the uk's main or only net exporting region uh, if not the only, certainly there's there's not important many one. of them, and um, and you know we're, we're, it's it, again that's 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 important. I mean that's mm-hmm. you know it's a big part of this region's offer that we you know we 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 face east with ports you know all the way down our coastline. We've got two brilliant international airports, you know, mm-hmm. so we that's part of our offer, and that's you know we've got we know we've got brilliant businesses that export their products and services around the world really successfully. But we've also got a big cohort of businesses that are just on the cusp of exporting and just need that little bit more support that hopefully we provide them with mm-hmm. um, just to help them take that first step into it. And once, they, once they've once they done it, again, that's that's just you know, mm-hmm. kind of releasing them to global markets, which is just brilliant to see. Because I think that's my big thing. It's my kind of working class roots. It's the underdog spirit that I kind of just want to fight for the little guy. I just It's me. Yeah. And it, what I love is that it's that balance again of how as a region, can we really try and th- thrive to sell into Thailand and sell into different parts of the world? Because we can, if that makes sense. Yeah. And even Absolutely. when from Newcastle, when we got the Dubai flight, Emirates, mm-hmm. I used to do that quite a lot to the Middle East, but it genuinely does open up the world in that part of the region. And then likewise, yeah. when a lot of people are looking to invest in the Northeast of England for loads of different reasons, we're a great touch point. There's low um, labor costs and available space. And it's just, it's really fascinating that again the further you go through your career you start to see how the jigsaw pieces fit together and i know a lot of people won't care or they don't see it but i get it and that's why i just wanted to kind of ask you about it